Welcome to Pinball Mayhem. Here's a quick video to answer a question from someone online uh, for Haggis Pinball and uh, kind of help you guys out with connectors. So kind of more on the how to build series rather than the how I've done it. So I just want to start with in the back box I got the P3 rock. I'm using a four pin uh, Molex connector still pretty much cut off of an ATX power supply. Uh, these are very plentiful, I wouldn't bother buying them. Uh, and three pin connectors, so those are 0.1 uh, pitch. So that's all I'm plugging into the main backboard. Now I, I did do some optional things such as <coughs> some uh, Z connectors and some 156s uh, here and here. That just depends on uh, if you're on your first version how disassemblable you want to make it. I can pull my front panel out with just a, a quick plug there. Uh, a lot of people on the first version don't and here's my here's the wood of the playbook a lot of people in the first version don't bother with uh make worrying about taking it apart they're more, more or less worried about making it work oh now let's look at the uh power entry board i went with this i would recommend if doing it again i'd buy this first I'd recommend right away so we got a couple um another more that ATX power supply connector. I actually made a long extension. Used all four connections even though the grounds are tied together. Yellow for 12. So that's the power in. This uses a two pin for my... Um, f f okay, that's the power in. This uses a two pin for the uh, uh, the relay control. This is going to go to ground. And I'm actually just using a three pin left over from something else. It is keyed so I can only plug it in there. So any one of these uh, I have. This is my a five pin. These are all 0.156 on this board, except for this. The five pin here is for the uh, high voltage in, and I believe there's another connector here. I don't, can't see it very well. That looks like a, possibly like a two pin for your 15 volts if you're using that. I'm not using that. Um, <clears throat> and these are all eight pins. 0.156 sockets. There are seven connections on the board. I always overbuy. And the AC comes in and out here. Really nice and clean. Uh, so I mean, if you have, you should have plenty of twos and threes uh, left o left over after the bottom. Always overbuy. Figure out what you need. Multiply times 1.5, and it never hurts. Nines and eights use a lot in Williams pinball. Let's go around to the bottom of the play field. show you what else we're going to be looking at. Uh, the switchboards are going to be using that 0.13 pins. That's your serial cables for all the boards. So you're going to need a lot of those. And these are kind of salvaged off another one because I ran short uh, when I was making it. So that's why you want to always have plenty so your connectors match. These are 10 pin point ones, and then the power is a 3 pin. So that's why 3 pins, 2 pins on the 0.156s. You're going to use a lot of those 3 pins and point ones. These 10 pins here are uh, uh, you only need two per switchboard. Buy one or two spare in case you break them or something. Uh, looking at the the uh, PD board, you see we got uh, this is our nine pin, three pin, another three pin. So each bank has two three pins, a nine pin, and then we got our uh, power in. So lots of twos, one five six. Lots of threes, one five six. Uh, this once again nine pins. You're going to use as another pinball machine. So. I would buy double what you think you need for the project. Going down, now this is uh, my lamp control board. I haven't gotten in too far. I know they make some breakout cables for the ribbons, but just, I have it powered up. I'm using one light off of it right now. Two pin for power, three pin for our, uh, our uh, serial connection. And you, if you notice on this one, see I got two serials in and out. That's why the, it's a bus until you hit the last one in the chain, which is where you terminate it using your dip switches. Moving down a little bit further, just want to show you, you know, number of connections. Lots of lots of those little threes and lots of the big three and big twos. Kind of see where one a little hog wild. Now, optional connections, which I would highly recommend thinking about. Like this is a drop target bank. I can pull it off with this one switch wire and I can disconnect the solenoid. So that's a, a more of a power connector. I don't know the style of Molex, uh, higher amperage. I also did those kind of connectors here and here. 
on my uh, on my uh, harness going to my play field. So if I disconnect this plug, this plug, I pull this serial off and this serial off, uh, I can pull my play field out. I can have it on the ground in relatively short time. Anything that goes through the play field, I kind of did it like a Williams game, where if you're going through the play field or you have a separate mechanism that you're going to want to put on the bench, have a connector. Here's an example of where I ran short on the proper Zs. I had to steal these out of an arcade game. So having .1 Zs or connections, extra plugs laying around allow you to make these uh, kind of uh, junctions so you can pull certain things out and be able to pull the mechanism off the top side. So these two are for my optos. Uh, actually three of these are for my optos that, and switches and such that I go to my mini play field. So I can unplug those, feed them through a hole over here, pull an upper play field off. A couple things that'd be nice just to have for servicing. Drop target assembly, three screws, or four screws, two switches, and uh, two plugs. Four screws, two plugs, and I can have the drop target assembly on the bench, changing out the t drop targets, and back in the game. So kind of, this is a little homemade board I made. Once again, I just used the connectors I had around. It's, uh, it's, it's my relay for turning off my GI, and that's my uh, uh, power distribution for my optos. I didn't want to power them with 12 volts because then you need those huge cement resistors. I just went with five volts to power my opto emitters and uh, kind of just used, uh, if you can read the code, it looks like yellow, brown, black, gold. That's what I went with for my resistors. I should go with the higher, uh, at least a half watt. Uh, I think some of those may be quarter watts. I don't know if these may be newer halves. Just what I had laying around, haven't had a problem. And I just kind of label it with a little plug, soldering some stuff. So kind of looks like a mess, but it works great. Thank you. Uh, hopefully this helps you out.